Ready? Discharging in three, two, one. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up so I can explain what this is and why I built it. So, I'm a guy who enjoys an occasional carbonated beverage, but now I seem to have more cans than I know what to do with. 73 to be precise. I even built some of them into a little fort. What? Don't judge me. Alright, so today I've decided to build a can crusher. Uh, no, not like that. Although that would be vastly more convenient. Nah, my can crusher crushes cans using a 3 megawatt powered magnetic impulse. That's how can mafia works. I'll explain the physics behind it and my design later in the video, but here are the cliff notes. An aluminum soda can is placed in a few coils of copper wire. When a huge inrush electrical current starts flowing around the coil, it creates both a magnetic field and an opposing current around the perimeter of the pop can. If you use one of the right hand rules, we find that the intersecting current and magnetic field vectors create an inward force vector that crushes the can. Now, we're talking about a lot of power here, over a megawatt a thousand times more than the maximum power that you can get from an outlet in your home. My setup is this, I use a variable transformer and a microwave oven transformer to charge a 3 kilovolt capacitor bank. Whew, can't be too careful with these things. By the way, these capacitors are super dangerous, so don't mess. This capacitor bank is shorted through a coil of wire that the can sits in by a switch, if you can even call it that, to short out the capacitors and get a huge current, hopefully enough to crush the can. Let's find out. I was asked not to do this particular experiment in the laboratory, which I guess is reasonable, so I head to a friend's house to test it there in a basement that I have affectionately taken to calling the Kaboom Room. We brought the voltage up slowly using a variac, while wearing safety glasses and high voltage rubber gloves. Once the capacitors are charged, the can goes in the coil, and everybody stands back while I short out the capacitor Ready. bank. Discharging in three, two, one. Whoa. <laughs> Anybody else's ears ringing? Yeah. Yes. What was that? <laughs> Okay, adhering protection to the, uh, list of safety equipment. So, my setup exploded, my wire connectors turned to vapor, and the can crushed a little. That was okay for a first go, but I think we can do better. After some parts were swapped out, we were ready to go again. The biggest difference this time is that I swapped out the thick coil for a thin wire that hugs the can better. I fully expect this wire to vaporize, but last long enough to get the job done. Now, uh, this lemonade can was looking at me funny. So what's next? Charging in three, two, one. Beautiful. Now that is the result that I was expecting. I mean, sure, the coil disintegrated a, a little bit. A lot a bit. So I whipped up a few more of those coils for a couple more tests. I'm curious as to the duration of time that the can is being crushed. After reviewing the high speed for our next test, I determined that even at 3000 frames per second, the can was fully crushed in under a frame, meaning that this event occurs only in a few microseconds. If you know me, you know there's one thing I like to do, and that's pointless stuff, just to see what happens. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you put your phone into a super powerful electromagnet? No, you haven't. But I have. But don't worry, I have a perfectly rational reason. Yo. Hello, Mr. Erdema. I believe I got that right. This is Juanita Colley. And I'm calling you today to let you know that you have won our grand prize of our cruise. Isn't that exciting? 
It's so exciting. We're just so excited to bring you this cruise. And uh, we are offering this special offer on your airfare to get there. Now, that airfare is extra, of course. So uh, they all found you me. have to do is... Uh, I don't know how, but they found me. credit card number. I'm going to wait on the line here. I'm sorry, phone number six, but you've been compromised. It's the only way to be sure. Three, two, one... Well, as you can see, perhaps unsurprisingly, it is very dead. It didn't explode, but that magnetic impulse turned all of its inner components into funk soup, no doubt. Now that we've seen how the can crusher works, it should be pretty easy to understand the good old science going on. There are two right hand rules that you should know. The first one is a lot like a thumbs up. The direction that your fingers curl represents the direction that current goes around an electromagnet and your thumb represents the direction of the magnetic field, in this case, up. For the next right hand rule, you need to throw this gang sign, where all three of your fingers are perpendicular to one another. If your index finger, if we let that represent the direction that current is flowing through a wire, and your middle finger represent the direction that the magnetic north is pointed, then now your thumb represents the direction of the force that that conductor will feel. For all you nerds out there, this right hand rule is giving us the cross product IL cross B to give us the force. Now we can apply these two right hand rules to fully understand how a can crusher works. So essentially what we have here between the electromagnet and the can is a transformer. Let's say that well, let's say that there's a switch here, and as soon as we close that switch, current's going to start flowing that way through the electromagnet. So we can use our right hand rule like this, and we see that there's an upward magnetic field. This is where we can apply Faraday's law. I'll write that up here real quick. Essentially what this means, I'll rewrite it a little simpler, it means that the sum of all of the voltages is equal to the negative change in the magnetic field over the change in time. The amount of time that the magnetic field spends changing is something that we nerds refer to as transients. So as this magnetic field strength is changing, we get a current induced in the can. And thanks to that negative sign, we know it's going to be in the opposite direction that it is down here in the electromagnet. It will be in the opposite direction, moving around it like that. So now we can use our second right hand rule. We know that the current is moving that way across the can. The magnetic field is pointed up, so our thumb represents the force, is pointed in toward the center of the can, no matter where on the can we look. And that is what causes the can to crush itself. This animation may help you visualize that a little better. This next part is a close look at my design for all of you do-it-yourselfers who want to emulate what I did. That said, I feel I should issue a disclaimer, because this is a whole new level of dangerous. This video is hardly an exhaustive resource on safely dealing with high voltage. If you would like what I think are some good resources, check the description. With no further ado, here's what I did. First we start with some pretty large capacitors, 400 volts DC and 3300 microfarads. And I cut some aluminum strips to connect all of these capacitors together in the bank. Now you can set up a capacitor bank in series and in parallel to get higher or lower voltages and currents. The equations are on screen for you now, and here is my setup. Just a friendly reminder that these voltages are lethal. Next I start making the actual discharge switch, which is simply two lustrous brass bells that I put near each other and discharge them with a piece of copper on a stick. After a couple of professional quality wire connections, I had everything assembled inside this gray box. Now the coil is 3 to 4 turns of insulated wire that can handle sufficient amount of current, which as you know I changed later. 
Now I use a microwave oven transformer to step up the wall voltage to 2000 volts RMS. And after turning into DC using a bridge rectifier, I get peak values of nearly 3000 volts. And that's it, this design is actually pretty simple. Just charging some capacitors and then shorting them out through a coil. And with that, I think I'll wrap up. If you are interested in can crushers and you want to learn more about them, I've included some neat links in the description. So feel free to check any of those out. Hand curated by yours truly. And if you had any questions, ask me down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So at that, I think I'll wrap up and say thanks for what- What's up? Hello, Mr. Erdema. This is Juanita calling.